A once beautiful chalk stream was reduced to biological ruin during the early 1960s. A linear, overwide and uniform channel remained, resulting in slow flows and a riverbed covered in thick sand deposits. So how did our chalk stream get like this? Well, initially they were deepened for tank defences during the war, and then a national campaign to produce our own food took over in the form of Dig for Victory. This was the origin of land drainage and the post-war agricultural revolution. So, rivers were dredged to get water off the land and down to the sea as fast as possible. Meandering channels were straightened and widened with dredged river gravels piled high on the adjacent banks. Whilst these engineered channels are efficient for floodwater conveyance during the winter months, they are correspondingly shallow and slow flowing for the rest of the year. Slow flows allow healthy riverbeds to become suffocated with sand deposits, which are uniformly distributed over the gravels. Look out for silt-loving plant species such as Xanachelia, which is often mistaken for swan-grazed beds of ranunculus. The basis of the food chain in our river involves the production of single-celled algae using photosynthesis. Macroinvertebrate herbivores that feed on algae are moved up the food chain by small carnivores such as bullhead and trout, ending with predators like the grey heron. However, whilst we know that this process is taking place, there is an underlying root cause to the river's lack of productivity. Optimising biodiversity requires fundamental changes to the river's physical form. New sinuous flood berms were installed to narrow the channel and increase flow velocity. Cavities left by the borrow pits were retained to create riparian pond habitats and large woody debris from local willows was built into the margins to provide cover for wildlife and promote flow diversity. The new sinuous bank line was staked out with willow logs prior to backfilling with spoil from post-war dredgings. Geotextiles were used to retain the saturated soil, which was then raked into a compact, low-level flood berm. Turfs from the original bank margins were used to vegetate the riparian zone, seen here with a newly formed pond to the rear. Tree trunks were used to provide cover for fish and to introduce bank sinuosity. This allowed us to combine natural materials with geotextiles to create a durable long-term solution. Finally, a large embayment was filled with hazel faggots to trap sediment and create an emergent marginal habitat. Four years later, we returned to the site to observe the changes. The immediate visual impact from the bank was one of dense swathes of marginal vegetation, whilst the fast-flowing sinuous channel was an abundance of weeds. The scouring of green sand from the central riffle has exposed a cobble and flint substrate that merges into the adjacent sediment trap. We refer to these classic chalk stream features as favourable condition. Let's take a quick look at some of the key habitats. In the fast-flowing riffle, we found large chunks of chalk encrusted with vibrant Hildenbrandia algae, and equally large flints were providing stable anchorage to the Fontinalis species of willow moss. Amongst the cobbles, we also found adult bullheads together with their juveniles. All of these are key indicators of favorable condition. In the marginal woody debris, we found burrowing mayfly nymphs, the rare freshwater pea mussel Pisidium, a free-range Hydropsyche caddis and a male three-spined stickleback. A cursory dip into the pond revealed numerous toadlets, with pond-bred damselflies flitting amongst the luxuriant vegetation. 
The planting of nectar yielding species such as teasels adds yet further to biodiversity. And this grass snake was spotted next to the pond, quietly digesting a recent meal. The sediment trap has proven ideal for brook lamprey, a key biodiversity action plan species. These sediment deposits also provide essential habitats for mayflies, seen here hatching from nymph into subimago. Waterfowl such as coots favour the dense marginal vegetation for cover and to build their nests close to the water's edge. As the autumn draws near, our restored river begins yet another cycle. Flowers give way to seeds, and trout will soon be moving onto the silt-free gravels to spawn. Wild trout are just one of several key species that have prospered, following the transformation of this dredged channel into a pristine and biodiverse habitat.